It was the opening day in the Skilling Open, the first event in the online Champions Chess Tour organised by the Play Magnus Group. There was real drama today, so many interesting games. My favourite was this. Ali Reza Firuzja, 17 years old, against Wesley So. Wesley's rated number 9 in the world, Firuzja number 18 in the world, but Firuzja, well, he is the coming man, a, a real chess prodigy. Many have marked him out as potentially a challenger for the world title. Let's have a look at what happened. This was really dramatic. Firuzja with the white pieces. And here he plays pawn to e3. Now, normally one might expect the queen's gambit here with white. This is absolutely standard and most people play like this, the top players. But Firuzja played e3, a much quieter move but it avoids lots of theory. Wesley So is really well known as a great opening theoretician. So I think Firuzja is just trying to do something a little bit off beat to try and catch out his opponent or just to avoid the kind of preparation that Wesley is renowned for. So pawn to e3, pawn to c5. So it's almost like it's a reversed queen's gambit. And it's a very logical move, of course. Black is using his pawns to gain space in the middle. Fiduzja accepted the gambit pawn. And after e6, well, Wesley wants to recapture that pawn with the bishop. Fiduzja decided to defend that pawn. So this is already very ambitious. And Wesley played pawn to a5. So if pawn takes pawn, then you can take this, and then that one will fall. Firuzja played pawn to c3, just defending that. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, and now pawn to b6. Now that means if white takes that pawn, then black will capture the pawn on b4 with check here. White blocks, and then queen takes pawn. Basically, black has got back all the pawns and has quite a pleasant position because this one on its own could turn out to be rather weak. Let's go back. So pawn to b6 has just been played. So black is simply threatening to recapture the pawn. So Fidozja speeds up his development by playing bishop check. That is blocked. Bishop takes bishop. And knight takes. So once again, white has the slight problem of what to do about this pawn. Because if it captures or moves forward, then this bishop will come out and take the pawn with check. But here is Furu's just canny idea. He plays a4. Looks very strange just to advance these pawns. But the idea is this. After pawn takes pawn, b5. He set up with this pawn duo that are potentially very dangerous. Now, normally one expects perhaps a pawn promotion, a pawn to get the, to the other side of the board in the end game and not you know, right at, basically right at the start of the game. But that is the intention, that these pawns can support each other moving forward and there is the potential to get to the other side of the board. Now, it's not going to happen at the moment with all the pieces on the board. But nevertheless, that is already at, in right in Black's mind. My goodness, if those pawns roll forward, then it could cost me a piece. Now, on the other hand, let's look at it from Black's viewpoint. And the good news is that Black controls the centre with those pawns. Now, if they can be forced down the board forcing away white pieces, then black has the chance to dominate the game. So it's a really unbalanced position right out of the opening. Bishop d6, that's on an excellent diagonal looking down towards this side of the board. And castles from white, both sides castle, and queen c7. So you can see that Wesley has set up 
a battery on this diagonal down towards the king. Of course, that pawn is protected by the knight at the moment. Knight d2. Ali Reza brings out the knight. Very good. And c4. So there we go. That pawn mass is starting to advance. And already there is a potential threat there to attack two pieces. But bishop c3 blocks that pawn. Good move. And now black advances through the middle. Now, you don't have to do that. Maybe a more prudent move was to play rook b8, just to keep an eye on those pawns with the two rooks. But e5, somehow this looks really impressive. Black wants to push forward, as I mentioned before, pushing that knight out of the way, which was defending that pawn on h2. So this is extremely dangerous. If pawn to h3, now that means that when the knight is pushed out of the way, then the bishop can't take the pawn. But then black would play knight c5. You can see how those pawns give that knight room to jump forward and then it could land on that d3 square and that is... Uh, a beautiful octopus knight. There we are. I've said it. One of my favourite pieces. But this next decision from Firuz Jar, I think, was really bold. He could he could play h3 and keep his king side together. Instead, he went for it on the queen side straight away with pawn to a5. So those pawns are rolling forward. Incredible. Allowing pawn to e4... And now, instead of moving the knight, first of all, he pushed on with this pawn. So they're getting closer to the touchdown. Attacking the queen. Of course, the queen has to move. And now the knight really has to move. So knight to d4. Which is, a, a, of course, a beautiful square for the knight in the middle. But black has taken that pawn. The king is in check, must move to the side. So white's kingside position has been damaged. And that is extremely dangerous. Of course, these pawns have menace. But if white's king is checkmated, that's the end of the game. So what about those pawns? You know, black might even just give up a piece in order to attack on the kingside. So this is such a risky way for Firuz Jha to play. Now, the bishop comes back before it gets trapped with g3. And now, well, if Firuz Jha wants to play it perhaps in a slightly safer way, although I don't know how one can play safe in a position like this, but it is possible to play the pawn to f4. And after pawn takes pawn... Queen takes pawn. Now, that at least brings the queen across, so it'll be more difficult for black to get an attack on white's king. Now, you could say it's also slightly damaged white's pawns, but still, um, I think, I mean, that's the kind of move that I would want to do. I'd be terrified about my king coming under attack. But Firuz Jha just played the knight into c6. Forking queen and bishop. So the queen has to move. And knight takes bishop. And knight takes knight. Well, from white's point of view, it's good news and bad news. Good news is he's got rid of that dangerous bishop. Bad news is there's a knight that's taken its place. And here, well, if Fidu's Jar wants to just calm everything down a little bit, then he could exchange off bishop for knight. And that would just kind of take a little bit of the heat out of the position, which, like I said, with white, I would be very keen to do, particularly as that knight on e5 looks so dangerous. But instead, he played pawn to g3, which I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what is he up to? He's weakened these squares around the king. I know he's sort of trying to block out the queen, but still, that looks like an incredibly risky move. And indeed... Wesley decided, OK, I'm moving my knight in. I'm threatening queen to h6, check, and then mate on h2. 
so the king has to move forward. Now there is a threat to play knight takes pawn. You can see that pawn is pinned. If it's if the knight were to be taken, then queen takes queen. So black has to defend against that threat. So he does so by playing queen to e6. Once again, white could simply exchange off bishop for knight just to get rid of one of those attacking pieces. But no, Firuz Ja, he is a principal man. He wants to keep that beautiful bishop. It is a lovely piece, but still, it's very risky to play like this. So he's played rook b1, supporting the pawn on b6 so that potentially he can advance that pawn. And yeah, that that's a worry for black. So that's why... The rook came across to b8. Incidentally, of course, if queen h6, then white can defend with rook h1. And there's no problem. So rook b8 played. So keeping an eye on that pawn. So pawn, a, pawn to a6 can't be played anyway because the rook takes pawn. But but also just make sure that um, that pawn is under attack if the a-pawn advances. Queen e2. Fine. He might can be considering playing f3 because that pawn is now defended by the queen. Knight to d3. Well, it's a beautiful piece. It is the octopus knight right in the heart of white's position. But at least, actually, I mean, these squares aren't so important for white. So actually, rook, the rooks have enough freedom. But that knight is looking at the f2 pawn. So for the moment, the rook on f1 is rather tied to that spot. So, I mean, how does white make progress here? You want to push these pawns, but pushing that one to b7 won't get very far. The rook will just come up the board and, and the b7 pawn could be taken. It's tricky. Fidus Ja played rook b5. An interesting one. Looking at that pawn here. And now... Um, Wesley played the rook to a6. Well, it seems reasonable, but maybe f5 is a better move, supporting that knight and then rook a6. And one of the reasons is, now that the pawn supports the knight, in the game, rook a6 happened. And here, Firuz Ja could have played rook takes pawn. It's an interesting move. Let's just have a very quick look with the idea if queen takes rook, then queen takes knight. And suddenly, okay, white has given up uh, the exchange, but has quite a nice initiative there. Okay, it's a little bit more complicated than that. There's a lot going on there. Um, but instead, Fidu's Cha played knight b1 after some thought. Now, it's a, it's a very interesting idea, as we're about to see. And Wesley wasn't really alert to the possibilities that white now has. He played pawn to h5, which looks reasonable because perhaps you want to advance that pawn again to try and weaken white's king position. But a subtle move here is queen to d7, attacking the rook. And then if the rook is to be maintained on d5, then knight a3. But the knight is not in such a good position on a3. As we're about to see, it manages to get into c3 and, and interesting things happened. So that might have been a better way for black to play. But queen d7, I mean, that's a very subtle move. Remember, this is rapid play. They get 15 minutes, minutes each on the clock, plus 10 seconds per move. But, you know, it's fast. Queen d7 is a very subtle move. h5 feels like a very natural way for black to play. And here, well, Firuz Ja really started to take control. Bishop d4. Excellent move. It's not actually about supporting that pawn. It's about creating, just uh, allowing the knight to come into this really nice square. And I love this maneuver, knight b1. So let's see. Pawn to h4. So Wesley is intent on attacking, but watch how this turns around and completely rebounds on him. Rook h1. 
Now, if knight takes f2, then rook takes h4, and, well, it's white that has gained from that one. The rook is looking good here. And something similar happens in the game, because after rook h1, pawn takes g3, f takes g3, and now the rook is starting to look good here. So, for example, well, black is in trouble. If rook a8, trying to capture that pawn, then simply knight c3, putting pressure here. Actually, it's not possible to take that pawn on a5, because b7 attacks the rook, well, threatens b8. It's, it's all over, and of course, that rook can be taken as well. So let's come back here. So that rook is on the open file. Black has just exchanged here. And Wesley played the knight back to h6 to block the rook's attack. But white's initiative is fantastic here. Knight c3, there we go, that beautiful maneuver. And here, well, this starts to be just nightmarish for black and a dream position for white. Black's rooks are tied to defending against the advance of those pawns. And then white turns all his attention to the king side. You can see those rooks out of play. And now the rook, knight, bishop. In fact, all white's pieces contribute to the attack. Watch what happens. Queen d6. Rook takes d5. The rook breaks through, attacking the queen, which moved down to a3. And now... Firuzja finished with a flourish. Rook takes knight. Boom! The queen came in check. If the king comes here, then it's mate on g7. So king f8. Bishop g7 check. And here Wesley resigned. Why did he resign? Well, if the king goes that way, then it's checkmate on g7 again. And if the king goes the other way, here we go. Mate in one, queen d7. There's a really attractive mate. Wow. It all kind of finished with a great crescendo there. But what a brave way for Firuz Jar to play. I mean, both players, I think, played very bravely. But I think Firuz Jar really showed his skill there. And I'm just going to highlight that manoeuvre again in this position. Just when it, you think, well, how can white do anything? You can't move the rook because the pawn can be taken. What do you do? Well, he improved the position of his worst placed piece, the knight here, with that manoeuvre knight b1. And then once the bishop moved, knight c3. And that was decisive because it ended up that white won the pawn on d5. Superb game. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in future rounds. It was a dramatic first day. I'll be showing you more videos later in the tournament anyway, for the time being. Thanks for watching.